Ladies and gentlemen, it finally happened again. On September 4th, 2022, the world changed forever. On that day, two gentlemen were involved in a chess match in St. Louis, Missouri. With the white pieces was Magnus Carlsen. With the black pieces was Hans Niemann. Hans Niemann won that game. On the very next day, Magnus Carlsen withdrew from the Singfield Cup, putting out a cryptic tweet as to why he did it. And that set off a massive cheating scandal. And that set off an internationally discussed $100 million lawsuit. Since then, the lawsuit has been settled. Hans Niemann has been reinstated to chess.com. However, Magnus and Hans have not played a serious game of chess since September 4th of 2022. They've been in the same room, they've been in the same vicinity, but they've never played a serious game against each other. Keyword is serious. They've played two times. First time they played, Magnus Carlsen resigned in one move as a form of protest. The second time that they played, they traded all the pieces, they made an effortless draw. Nothing happened. It was as if they didn't want to play at all. Until now. March 19th, 2024, Magnus and Hans are playing against each other. This cannot be understated how epic this is. And if they continue to play against each other in online events, I will continue to make content. I mean, th th this is the ultimate highest form of, of a sort of feud, a sort of rivalry. Rivalries generally are the players beating each other. Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, those are rivalries. These guys have not played nearly enough games against each other, but this is a blood feud, and I'm going to share it with all of you. They met in the Chess.com Title Tuesday Tournament. It's a Blitz Tournament. Three-minute Blitz with a bonus time per move. Last time they played, Magnus played E4. Hans played E5. You'll notice the board color is changing because it's not the same position. Knight F3. And after Knight C6, it was a Berlin, and a lot of pieces were traded. But that did not happen in this game because Hans Niemann plays the most confrontational opening possible, which is the Sicilian defense, looking to create an imbalance and not allowing Magnus to kill the game. Because the thing is, in chess, both sides kind of mutually agree to, to, to kill the game. Magnus thinks for six seconds on the second move and decides to play knight f3. I think in this six seconds, Magnus decided, am I going to try to beat him and potentially risk losing, which is what Hikaru did. Every time Hikaru plays Hans online, he tries to win. Sometimes he loses and Hans gets content. By the way, if Hans is going to react to this, hi Hans. Shout out to the Hans channel. Um... Magnus decided I'm going to play knight f3, I'm going to play the open Sicilian. The open Sicilian involves the king's knight developing and trading in the center like this and playing knight takes d4. Hans plays d6. Main line Sicilian. We have d4, we have takes, knight, knight takes, knight f6, knight three, a6. The Nidorf. Named after Miguel Nidorf, knight f6, d6, a6. And uh, it's the most confrontational opening that exists. White now has no less than like 16 possible moves. White can play one. That's not legal. One, two... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, se like uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. <laughs> there are like twenty possible moves that people have tried in this position. Magnus plays the main line. Bishop two e three. By the way, Black can play knight g four in this position, and the players can repeat moves. Just, just so you're aware. Uh, Hans plays e five. That is the central idea of the Knight of Sicilian. Black decides where to put the pawn on e6, e5. That's kind of the final branch. And now white can move the knight back to no less than three squares. I mean, you could also play knight f5. It's not a good move, though. Uh, and then white tries to take advantage of the weakened d5 square. As you can see, black's two pawns are standing on d6, e5, which means the light square on d5 is a bit weak. And Magnus plays knight f3. Uh, knight b3 is very normal. Knight e2 is very normal. Knight 2 f3 is also uh, completely normal. Black plays bishop 2 e7. All right. White plays bishop c4. The uh, square on d5 is up for grabs. Castles, castles, bishop to e6. At this point, neither side has spent more than one second on a move, except Magnus deciding whether he was going to play knight f3 or not on the second move. We have bishop takes e6. We have f takes e6. Black has committed a doubling of his own pawn structure. However, despite the weak pawn on e6, he gets two good things. Number one, the d5 square is protected. Number two, the f file is open. However, this pawn is weak. So it's exploitable, right? 
Magnus now thinks for a little bit, plays knight a4. The idea of knight a4, very straightforward. You are trying to put the knight on b6. You are trying to control some of these squares. Also, you might want to play c4 in the future, just in the future, right? You want to move your pawn, which you couldn't move when the knight was standing on the c3 square. Uh, this looks like a free pawn because the knight went there. It's not because of knight b6. And after rook a7, I can play something like queen d3, or quite simply, I can play knight d5. All right, I can play something like knight d5. I have various discovered attacks, and the computer already thinks you should actually give up this rook if you're playing black. But uh, yeah, Hans doesn't fall for that. He plays knight f to d7. Now, knight b to d7 looks a little bit more natural, but knight, knight b d7 is maybe not the best move, because after knight g5, you cannot protect your pawn. There's no way to protect your pawn. Uh, which is kind of the reason why this pawn being here is obviously a little bit uh, suspect, right? So... Here we go. Knight fd7. c4. I did mention to you, this was the other idea. Again, the battle is still very much for that d5 square. If black cannot move that pawn forward, that is going to be Magnus's target for the duration of the game. By the way, isn't this exciting? Can we just take a moment and say, like, the two people involved, the two major protagonists and antagonists of an international cheating scandal <laughs> are just straight up trying to take each other's head off in a chess game? I mean, that's so sick. Can you imagine if this was just boxing? I think Magnus might take that one. He's, he's, he's in really good shape. I gotta tell you, like, Hans might be taller, but... Anyway, I'm not going to try to get these guys to punch each other in the head. Rook c1. As you can see, right, we're trying to control this. Hans is trying to create a little counterplay. He's got the open f file, right? He's looking for, for the knight over here. Hans plays b6. I got to tell you, visually, optically, this looks really bad for black. It's actually, it's actually kind of not. Like, that's the thing about the Sicilian. It's a very resilient opening. You stomp your opponent from getting in on all sides. It's kind of like Sicily. Hence the name. You know, it's a beautiful, lush island. It's a perfect outpost for, uh, for, for, uh, for troops. There's, a, there, there's fertile land and everything. I went to Sicily last summer. It was a really, really beautiful place. Um, queen b3. Rook b8. Defending the pawn, right? How do you get in? Hans has the entire row protected. All the pawns are protecting a square. The knights are protecting a square. What is he going to do? Well, Magnus's last move, queen b3, had a sneaky idea. The square that is literally protected more than any other in the black position. Actually, that's not true. Technically, that would be f6. Protected one, two, three, four, and five times. Wow, you talk about... That's pretty cool. Uh, c5. With a discovered attack on the weak pawn that Hans created for himself several moves ago. Hans takes with the knight. He takes with the knight because... This is very important. Pay attention. He takes with the knight because this is black's probably most passive piece. And it's not really going to come back. So he decides, let me trade it. Let me trade it for one of these two pieces. And then Magnus can take with check. That's exactly what happens. And the trade is that Hans gets the open B file. But for getting the open B file, the B pawn no longer stands next to the A pawn, leaving the A pawn a little bit weak. Queen E6, King H8. Very tense game. In the, uh, in the aftermath of that exchange, the B2 pawn is weak. He has to protect it. But in the aftermath of that exchange, right, the D4 square is, uh, is up for grabs. So B3... Hans drops the knight directly into the white position. Now, a very big moment. Does Magnus take with the knight and turn this into a bishop position? Or does Magnus take with the bishop and turn this into a uh, knight versus bishop position? Me personally, I think bishop takes d4 is microscopically better. Let me tell you why. Because it's a knight versus bishop. The knight is a potential to go to light or dark squares, right? Which means that if the knight gets to d5 or c6 or f5, this bishop is useless. And with black having so many important pawns on dark squares, the bishop is really not a good piece. Black is going to have to rely on anti-positional methods to catch up in this game. Anti-positional meaning he might have to sacrifice a rook for the knight. He might have to put the bishop on a diagonal. Like, there is nowhere comfortable for this bishop to be. If you take with the knight and put this in and make it as a bishop position, you're going to have to rely on, like, f4. And it might work, but black is going to have a bishop for a bishop. So inherently, there is no imbalance. Magnus takes like this. Now, a very big moment. Does Hans take with the C pawn or the E pawn? C pawn looks nice, but then you give white the open file, and white can even play moves like rook c6, which just, it, it, it's actually very difficult to defend yourself. Hans is smart. He takes with the E pawn. Now, black has what we call a pass pawn. Not only is it a pass pawn, it is a protected pass pawn. So if everything cleared off right now, black has very good chances to win this game. Because this pawn is three squares from queening at all times. It is protected twice. So white struggles. White's king can't walk off because this pawn's going to queen. White's king has to stay in this little area, right? Magnus plays e5. 
tries to get a direct confrontation going with the position. Another thing he could have done here is played slow. Could have gotten the queen out. Then he could have played rook e1. Could have slowly built it up, right? He could have went for the queen side. He could have played a3, b4, trying to soften up the center. For example, uh, bishop f6, uh, a3. You know, queen e7, you look for rook e1, you look for b4 ideas. Like, you, you try to play a very, very complicated game. But he goes directly down the middle. Magnus' idea here with this move e5 is to get Hans to take him, so he splits his pawns. Now the knight is in the position, now knight f7. Now we see the value of having the knight versus the bishop. Because the knight can't... Uh, the bishop can't defend the light squares. It's not possible. That was the idea. Now Hans has a big moment here. He thinks he plays d5. That is exactly what Magnus wanted him to play. But... That's a free pawn. It is 100% free. Magnus thought for 15 seconds on this move and didn't take. He did not take the pawn on a6. Maybe it's because black can go here and then black can play like here and black has an attack. Maybe that's what he didn't like. Alternatively, I'm not saying he would have done this, but like, you know, there's a rook sacrifice possibly. G takes f3, rook to b6, for example, queen to d7, and all of a sudden, somebody's getting mated. And this does look very dangerous. I don't know, I haven't spoken to Magnus about the position, okay? I haven't spoken to him about it. I haven't spoken to get his thoughts. All right? So, queen g4. He doesn't take the pawn. But what does he have? He has a knight versus a bishop. He has a pawn that's three squares away from queening, just like this one is three squares away from queening. So these two pawns kind of balance out. Now, Hans plays a crazy move here. Crazy move. There's a lot of good moves here. Hans plays a crazy one, utilizing where the queen is right now, and he plays rook to b4. He thought for 30 seconds on that move, rook b4, sniping the queen on the upper side of the board and trying to get this pawn in. So now worst case scenario is let's say d3, c4, and all of a sudden black has two pass pawns? Black has two pass pawns? White has to play defense. So rook b4 is wild. Magnus plays rook d1. Magnus has a 10 second lead on the clock. It's a very complicated back and forth game. The engine is evaluating it as equal, not because it's boring equal, but because it's very complex. Hans plays queen e8. Queen e8. I think the idea of queen e8 is to go queen f7. That's basically it. He just wanted to sneak the queen over to this side of the board, right? But this is a mistake, and Magnus punishes it immediately by getting back into the position. He gets back into the position. Now these attacks are not as powerful. They're not there. And he's threatening this pawn, and he's threatening this pawn. So if black plays queen d8 exactly where he was, now he's going to take because this rook can't get in. Of course, there is rook f3. You can play rook b6. You can kind of go for the same concept. But he gets the queen back there, and Hans gives up the pawn on a6. A second time. He gives up the pawn on a6 a second time. And Magnus still does not take the pawn. He doesn't take... There is something he doesn't like about taking this pawn. I don't know what it is. Maybe he thinks he's going to be under attack. I don't know. Maybe he thinks there's things like g5. I don't know. But for whatever reason, maybe he's playing Hans and he's, you know, he's just trying to get him into an endgame. I don't know, but he doesn't take the pawn. Instead, he goes for the endgame of, uh, of Rooks and Knight versus Bishop. Hans takes back. Hans g gets out of dodge, but Magnus goes to where his strong spot is, which is the endgame. And the game is yet to be decided. All right, like we are entering a new phase. Knight e1 with the intention of playing knight to d3, kicking out the rook, attacking the pawn, and playing f4. That is the idea. All right? Now, Hans plays a move that, as far as I'm concerned, is a small inaccuracy. The idea is knight d3. He plays g5. This is exactly how Magnus beats people. He gets them to make overcommittal pawn moves. Over overcommittal moves in general. And that was to stop white from playing f4. It was to get the king off the back rank as well. But after knight d3 and rook b5... Hans is eating out of Magnus' hand. He's down 37 seconds on the clock, and Magnus is going to work. Here's g3. 
The idea is f4. He's going to get two passed pawns together, escorted by the knight. The pawn can't come forward. The bishop is worse than the knight. I talked to you about this whole thing. The rook is stuck. This bishop is stuck. If Hans plays g4, trying to stop Magnus from playing, he'll play h3. He'd give up the pawn. It doesn't matter because he's going to get the pawn back. If he plays h3 and h5 is played, then after it takes, takes, we got king g2, we got rook h1, we got the rook on the f5. We also have knight f4, knight t5. So it's really, really bad stuff. So Hans now plays king g7, trying to justify his, his pawn move. Now it's a big moment here for Magnus, right? Big moment. How do you prove your advantage here? What do you do? You're the best endgame player of all time. You have the endgame. You're playing your biggest rival. You got to bury this man. You could play a4, but then you lose your pawn, right? And you lose your pawn on b3, but you can take the pawn on c5. You know, you're going to get to an endgame. What do you do? What do you, you play king g2? You slow play it? By the way, why, why, why is uh, he not playing f4 right away? Well, maybe he doesn't like that the king can go to f5, and then maybe it's even to e4. He doesn't like something. So what is Magnus going to do? He plays e6. Wow. That is a massive decision. So now the pawn is a target. Is the idea rook f6, rook e1? What is the idea? Because the pawn is not strong there. It was a lot stronger where it was protected. Hans backs up to f8. Now Magnus goes for it with a4. He decides right now is the moment to force the issue. Right now. Rook takes b3. Knight c5. So now these pawns are weak, which means that pawn is weak, which means this pawn is weak. However, we see there the evaluation of the position is zeros. It's dead equal. Why? Because it's not about bishop takes. If you take with the bishop, all your pawns are weak. And I have a pawn two squares from queening, so one of your pieces is always going to have to play defense, but that's not the point. The point is, and Hans finds this move in 0.5 seconds. Rook c3. And by the way, here's an example, by the way. By the way, by the way. Wouldn't, ch wouldn't chess be crazy if you could take your own pieces? Like, knight e6 wins for white. I mean, that would be nuts if that was a component of the game. So Hans targets the knight, targets the rook, and his idea is that obviously he would undouble, and that would be a massive win for him. Something like bishop a3, c2, c1 is just, is, is, is just crushing. So Magnus plays, knight takes a6, and now Hans has an advantage. Magnus has gone wrong. Apparently the best move was to go knight d7, attacking the rook. Knight d7, and then, you know, if rook c8, you could play rook b1, and you try to get it on this. It, it was very, very complicated. Mag Magnus does what, you know, most knight takes a6. Now, Hans could have an advantage if he plays rook a8, forces the knight back to the c file, defended by the rook via the rook, and then plays rook c8. A little bit of dang stuff there. Instead, he plays rook c8 himself. Magnus, the only move now that doesn't lose the game, by the way, rook to b1. And suddenly, it is Hans Niemann's pawn and the one behind it that is causing a headache for Magnus. All of a sudden, the position is equal, but Magnus is the one that has to be careful. He plays king g2. Here comes, here comes Hans with rook c4 attacking the pawn. This is protected. This is protected, and all of this is protected. Magnus gets the pawn out of the way. Both guys under one minute on the clock. Rook a3. Hans going for the pawn. But going for the pawn is wrong because you needed seventh rank protection. You needed, to, you, you needed to have enough flexibility in the position that the rook stayed over here. By walking over here, Magnus is now winning with rook to b7. Hans's king gets close, defends the bishop, targets the pawn, but white is winning after knight c7. Threatening knight takes d5, which is simply a fork. Rook takes a5 here, keeps the game going because it at least protects this, but then the rook steps away from this pawn. And then I can play rook f3 and rook f7. And Magnus is back to winning. He's done his thing. He gets the knight there. Plus 1.5 position. Bishop c5. The game is over. The game is over. Bishop c5 doesn't even threaten anything. That's not even under attack. So the winning move here for white is e7. Winning the game on the spot. Because you're threatening to make a queen. If bishop takes, you have a fork. Pawn to e7. Utilizing the free space. That pawn is uncapturable, but it has to be captured. If you don't take the pawn, I make a queen. I win the game. So you move, I, it, you take like this, knight b5 check. That is probably what Magnus missed. He probably missed knight to b5, but I don't know what he missed. Bishop c5, e7 is winning on the spot. Magnus beats Hans, takes the lead in the rivalry for now. Instead, he doesn't play that. He plays the second best move. Plays the second best move, very tense position. Setting up e7 for real, for real. 
But the reason why that doesn't win is because now suddenly black plays d2. Black is knocking on the door. They both have pawns that are two squares away from queening. It was a race, but Magnus had an idea. The idea of rookie one was not just to push the pawn. It was also to take this pawn with a check and the king can't take the pawn because this is protected. Pawn wants to take the rook. What's worth more than a pawn and a rook? A king. What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer? King f5. Great song, by the way. Um, king moves. Rook goes back. Magnus is still winning and Hans Niemann has seven seconds on the clock. Hans goes rook d3. E7, there it is. He's in the clear now. It's over. And Magnus Carlsen is going to win this game. Rook takes, you make a queen. And if you go rook e4, all you've got to do with white is protect your knight. And the reason why you're winning is because after you protect your knight, you're threatening knight to e3 check, which also wins the rook. And there's absolutely nothing black can do. Black can play rook d4. I play rook d8. I can also play knight e3. But rook d8, threatening a queen. Can take, I take with check, if you, I take with check, etc. Magnus doesn't see that. He goes here. Rook b8 threatens a queen. But I don't have to take your knight, I can take your pawn. And all of a sudden, we're in a drawn endgame. Oh my goodness. Hans Niemann did it. The absolute madman. He survived that position. He survived multiple completely winning positions. None, none more brutal than this one. E7, e, that's, that's an easy move for Magnus under normal circumstances. I don't know what happened there. He went for rookie one knight d5, and then he got too low on time. He had 30 seconds, but you can't make certain moves with 10 seconds on the clock. It's a draw. This is a draw because it's a known endgame. It's a two on, it's a three on two, and it doesn't matter because one on zero ultimately is a draw. And uh, Magnus is still gonna try, of course. Hans has, you know, five seconds on the clock. We get to this position. Hans doesn't take. This is one of the ways you could lose this endgame is if you get the wrong imbalance. If you get the one versus the two, this is losing because I will play f4, I'll play rook h6, and you really want the pawn to fight both pawns. You don't want one off to the side. So that's the one thing I will say. And then, yeah, Hans knows that. So he plays king e4. And now it's just going to be a shuffle fest. And uh, one of the ways, you know, you, you can try to play this for a win, of course, with white is you can try to trade the rooks. What you're going to see, you know, he, he got his rook out of there, right? And, 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 and rook f4, that's a threat. Of a, that's a threat. The, 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 I told you, I would not recommend getting into a king and pawn endgame down pawns. It's math. You're going to lose, right? So don't do that. Um... Hans goes rookie five, and now it's just, you know, like they're getting a bonus second every time they make a move. He chases his king all the way back here. That's it. I mean, it's just a draw. Like, if I'm playing, I play rook a2, the king can't get out. Can't get out. King can't get out. And Hans Niemann, against all odds, right, gets the two on one, and, and this is it. It's just a draw. Y you can't win this, because the second you push one, I take. And so black is just going to be here, here, for the rest of the game. He's going to be in this square. That's where black is going to move. The rook is going to cut the king off, but the truth is it doesn't even have to do much. And uh, Hans shuffles. Magnus keeps trying. We have now crossed 90 moves, and there's nothing. There's a, he's not trading the rooks. He's do In this position, be it nerves, be it a mouse slip, Hans Niemann was supposed to walk up to his pawn and protect it, and he slipped. He made a mouse slip. Or he was nervous. But it certainly looked like a mouse slip. And uh, yeah, the king had to stay in this square because it would either be getting out of checks or walking up to defend the pawn. He loses this and <laughs> it's over. It's over. In the most absurd of fashions, and now Magnus just brings the king up. He uses the rook as a shield, right? And uh, he just slowly, methodically... Walks up the board, rook e8 check and g6. If the, if the rook goes anywhere else, if the rook stays here, uh, you actually still win with rook e8 and g6 because after it takes, you have rook e7 and then you win the rook. And uh, 109 moves and Magnus Carlsen wins. What a tense game. I mean, oh my God, it was so tense. It was a knight of Sicilian. There was nothing to choose between them. It was confrontational. It was positional. You know, Magnus tried to impose his will, the queen and the knight, but Hans was sharp. 
sacrificing the pawn on a6, trying to create counterplay. Magnus had to call the bluff. He didn't. He played it slowly, thinking he was going to beat uh, Hans in, you know, in the, in the phase of the game. He's the strongest. He went for it. He went for it. Hans defended really well, but then he didn't. Then he didn't defend really well. He was losing. And right here, put the dagger in the heart. Magnus misses it. And right at the end, he's thrown another lifeline and he loses the pawn. He had to keep the tension. Obviously, he was a bit, you know, he was concerned. Like, rookie one is very scary. It looks like you're going to lose here. But the craziest part about rookie one is that you can't do both. The rook is not actually, you can't, you can't take the rook. So you can play a6. If he takes you, you do this. He goes here. You can walk out with your king to h4. That's hard to see. He didn't see it. And oh my goodness, what a game. So Magnus wins. Barely. But these two are back to playing real games against each other, and I will continue to relay them to you because oh my goodness. Cheating scandal and massive lawsuit. This is, uh, this is everything we need in the chess world. This is... Or not. I mean, it's, it's not. You know, some people argue that it's bad for the game, and... I'm a content creator, and this is content. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.